What's up, spectators? Welcome back to an episode of Ace Attorney 6. Last time, we were about to finally make the connection between Rettens and... What's his name? The original Mr. Rius. So, let's see what happens. This puts her square in the crosshairs of one particular magician. Yes. And this piece of evidence points to that person with a grudge. Wait. Uh, I want to present the poster, but now I don't know anymore. Is it the notebook? No. No, it's gotta be this. Take that! And who exactly are you naming, Mr. Justice? Thirteen years ago, the great Mr. Rius belonged to Troop Grammary. But then the troop ousted him, and Mr. Rius vowed to get revenge on them someday. And what better way to accomplish that than through the ruination of their sole heir? But Mr. Rius is the victim, Mr. Justice, you big idiot. You've named a dead man as your suspect. Ah! But is he really dead? What do you mean, is he really dead? If the fact that Mr. Rius is the victim is what's throwing you off. Then how about we consider this possibility? What if the man who died on that stage yesterday wasn't Mr. Rius? Well, that changes everything. Good point, Apollo. Surprise is no reaction, though. You mean the victim was an imposter? Not Mr. Rius. Then what about the real Mr. Rius? It would mean the real Mr. Rius is still alive. That's absurd. Mr. Justice, who is the real Mr. Rius, if not the victim of this case? It's all coming together now. I finally see the gimmick, the trick to this entire case. This should explain everything, Your Honor. The real killer, the one who hated Troop Grammary and wanted to solely its name. The magician lurking in the shadows, who set up a fake Mr. Rius in his stead. The real Mr. Rius is- Really? I have to present this? For real? Take that! But that! Yeah. <laughs> Roger Rettens is the real Mr. Rius. Whoa, More of your fancy ninjutsus? Oh, hollow red pepper, your impotent seeds sprout not but meaningless empty words. Wow, that is very personal. You can't just call someone impotent seeds. You can't possibly have proof to support such an outlandish theory. Not a bad idea for a soap opera. But not even die-hard fans of the genre would stick around past the pilot. You want proof? Well, I've got proof. I can prove it by... Proving that the Mr. Reuse in yesterday's magic show was a fake. And to do that... I just need you to look at this spot on this poster! Cancelled! This is the injury Mr. Ryu sustained while practicing a magic trick 13 years ago. However... What is this amazing song that's been playing? The video the victim shot of himself shows no trace of that injury. You're absolutely right. Now, Mr. Rettens, what do you suppose we find if we took a look at your right forearm? 
Is there by chance a nasty 13-year-old scar under that sleeve of yours? Man, I called this so long ago. <laughs> Why would you roll up your sleeve and let the court have a look? It's a little too easy, I think. Now I'm starting to think it's not going to be there, and we're going to be like, what? Or are you hiding something else up there? Right? Because he's too calm. Come on now, I have nothing up my sleeve. I don't need to hide anything up there because I require no tricks or gimmicks. Obi Trice. For you see, my magic is the real deal. Okay. Is this what you're hoping to see? There it is. <laughs> Just as I thought. That's right, I am the Forgotten Magician, abandoned to the dark understage of Histra. The Great Mysterious. Ooh. This is totally absurd. Ho 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 ho! How ironic, wouldn't you say? That this odious mark carved into me by Troop Grammary would bring me back into the limelight once more. <laughs> my cat, not tank this time, Tammy, is still staring at the coin flip. Uh, strange are the karmic threads before me. If the witness is the real Mr. Rios, then who is the victim who perished in the magic show? He was but a fan. I met him on one of my programs several years ago. He said he had become a magician out of admiration for the great Mr. Rius. In confidence, I told him my true identity and let him take on my mantle. And when did this man take over for you? About two years ago, I taught him my tricks and even acted as his producer. And so, a mere amateur became a popular magician overnight. Courtesy of my magic on the stage we call television. Hope you enjoyed the show. You really had us all fooled. Mr. Rettens, or should I say Mr. Rius. In your hatred of troop grammar, you killed the victim, Mr. Mystery. And then set up Miss Wright to take the fall, didn't you? You did it all just to tarnish the Grammary name. I have no idea what you're talking about, lad. I set up the prank, that much is true, but it was simply a harmless joke on Trucy, I assure you. Yet she learned of the plan and made use of it to commit murder. That is how strongly the criminal elements runs in the blood of these Grammaries. Objection! But if it was a secret prank plan that very few people knew about, couldn't you have been the one to use it for murder instead? Ah! His head? Just kidding. What the heck was that? Heed my words, lawyer lad, for I fear your grasp on reality slipping. I do believe I told you that my magic is real. It employs neither tricks nor gimmicks. Enough with the ambiguity. Why don't you make your point already? My alibi is as pristine as ever. Wouldn't you agree, Prosecutor Zadmati? Yes, I suppose that is correct. The witness does have a solid alibi. What? Recall defense that at the time of the magic show, Mr. Rettens was at Take 2 TV. A fact that many people can easily attest to. That's right. I forgot all about that. So what do you think, Your Honor? Would you like me to testify on the matter? Yes, I think you'd better. Please tell the court more about your alibi. 
Very well then. On with the show. Are you watching, Magnifi Grammary? The time has finally come for my magic to snuff out your precious pedigree. The Grammary line will be no more. I'm gonna save it real quick. Because with one life, I can't really make any mistakes. I was at the TV station at the time of the Penrose performance. I was busy working on another TV program. Could spare no time for the magic show. Do ask my staff if you doubt my claim. And there it is, a simple and perfect alibi. No tricks, no gimmicks, just the truth. Do you understand now, perhaps? I did not grace the theater with my... Tammy, would you get out of the way? Ooh. I did not grace the theater with my presence until after the incident. So how could I have committed the murder? His staff did say he was there at the station. So it sure does sound like a rock-solid alibi. But that can't be right. If Mr. Rettens is the killer, he'd have to have been at the theater. There's gotta be a hole somewhere in this story. I assure you there are no holes on Mr. Ryu's stage. That's cause the body was dead already. Put in the coffin. True magic doesn't need trap doors to escape through. Do enjoy my show to the fullest. And my real alibi. But you did come to the theater eventually, isn't that right? Indeed. Anxious to see how the show was progressing, I made my way to the theater. Let's see, my journey took about 10 minutes by car. Could he actually have been at the theater during those 10 minutes, killing the victim? Allow me a stab at reading your mind. Could I have been at the theater during those 10 minutes, killing the victim? But no, I took a taxi. The driver can attest to that. Feel free to call the taxi company if my word does not satisfy you. Yes, call Sean Hannity. You can trust him. Call Sean Hannity, we talk about it all the time. The driver is a big fan of the ratings, Raja. I even gave him my card. He gave the driver his card? That was very clever of him. You might as well give it up, lad. Questioning real magic is a fool's errand. Besides, you know very well what I was doing at the time of the incident. What was this other TV show you were working on? My own special project, you see. I... One moment, perhaps this is more appropriate. It's a ratings Raja special production. Yeah, hang loose, baby! Hang loose, baby! It's called Desperation Regeneration. He switched personas just to say that. What's the show about? Washed up has been singers and comedians get together and play musical chairs. The winner of the game's given a second chance at their career. A priceless prize for chumps who washed up too early in life. Sounds great, right? Sounds like you! Might I suggest you appear on that show, Mr. Justice? As the ex-lawyer who used to make ridiculous bluffs in court and faded sadly into obscurity. And let the ratings Raja produce my TV debut, not in this lifetime. You have great reactions, who knows? TV might be your true calling. Whose side are you on? In any case, I was overseeing production of this program during the Penrose performance. Do ask my staff. Hold it. How do we know those staff members aren't in cahoots with you? I make it my business to perform solo. My magic is neither need nor warrant of assistance. Warrant. Want. After all, one of them could reveal the secrets behind my magic, could they not? So he doesn't trust anybody. He's the complete opposite of Trucy. 
There were many people there in the studio audience who saw the witness as well. Even if he had been able to persuade his own staff to cover for him, he could not have convinced so many complete strangers to do the same. He really has made a rock-solid alibi for himself. It's almost too good. It's eerie how perfect it is. Has all been revealed to you now? And there it is, a simple and perfect alibi. Hold it! I've got it. Do you have a brother? A brother that looks exactly like you, maybe? Again with the twins business. You think the audience will let you get away with using the same gimmick twice in a row? If you do not believe him, Defense, why not investigate for yourself? Though I'm sure your efforts will prove to be thoroughly fruitless. I guess the twins theory is a little far-fetched. His alibi really is airtight. I believe we've heard enough. While I believe the witness does indeed harbor some ill will against the defendant, there is no reason to doubt that he was at the TV station at the time of the incident. Yes, the facts prove it was impossible for the witness to have been involved with this crime. These last rites for the victim have dragged on long enough. The soul of the victim himself is so bored that it is resting on top of your honor's head. It is? The time has come. Let us punish the sinner and guide the victim's soul to the Twilight Realm. Apollo, Trucy will be thrown in prison and will be out of a job. But if you catch tasty fishies, will you sell me some at a good price? I have absolutely zero intention of going off on a tuna boat. You have to figure this out. It's no use. I can't find a single flaw, so what now? Behold! My never-ending magic show. Come for the awe-inspiring showmanship of the great Mr. Rius. And stay for my grand illusion until the end of time. Is he saying that we're still trapped inside some sort of illusion of his? That's what professional magicians do. They make their audience see something that isn't really there. In other words, you make us see illusions, right? That's how magic works? We call it misdirection. While we keep you busy believing one thing, we're busy making something else happen. What we say is there really isn't, and what we say is there actually is. Could it be? You know what, Mr. Rettens. I guess we have all been spectators to the elaborate illusion you've prepared for us. An illusion that has subtly turned our attention towards something you wanted us to see. What are you going on about, lad? Have you got something, Apollo? I just remembered something Trucy said about... Misdirection. What a magician says is there really isn't and what they say isn't there actually is. If we've all been taken for a ride by Mr. Rettens' magic, then maybe he's made us see something that wasn't really there. It's time to rethink all of my assumptions about this case. What have we been made to believe was there when it actually wasn't? What have we taken to be the absolute facts of this case? Murder time, durr. That's it? Ah, thought I was going to say it. If I reevaluate the validity of all these things, then just maybe... I feel like the judge was already about to end the, end the case, and now it's been, like, minutes. There's something uncanny about this case. Okay, what is it? Rettens' alibi. It's too perfect. That's true. It's like it's impossible to break no matter how hard we try. 
But maybe that's the trick. Maybe that's exactly what he wants us to think. I'm not following. We're not making any headway here because we've been so focused on breaking his alibi. I think I get it. You're saying he's using misdirection. It's definitely a possibility. Would the defense care to share with everyone what it's discussing over there? We believe that if we were to reconsider a certain assumption, we may finally arrive at the truth. In fact, I think we'll even finally see who's hiding behind the curtain, so to speak. And what is this certain assumption you're thinking of? This is the one key assumption we've been taking for granted this whole time. The culprit was on scene. Or the crime scene. Uh... What if the culprit was somewhere other than the theater at the time of the crime? What if there was some way to commit the murder without actually being there? If that were the case, then Mr. Retton's perfect alibi would become irrelevant. Objection. How could one person stab another to death with a sword without physically being there? Mr. Hat isn't the murderer, is he? Is Mr. Hat the murderer? No. Shut your mouth. Furthermore, we all saw what appears to be the culprit's shadow in the footage. Objection! But couldn't we just as easily assume that the shadow does not belong to the culprit? If it's not the culprit, then whose is it? I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the right track. We've all seen something that looks like this shadowy shape before, Your Honor. During the magic show itself. In that case, please point it out in the show footage for us. This is the thing that looks suspiciously similar to the shadowy figure of the culprit. Alright. How does that even remotely resemble the shadowy figure? I thought it looked pretty similar. Do you not think so? Not in the slightest. Well, go fuck yourself, because that's what it is, so... It looked pretty shady to me! And your logic is even shadier. That's enough! I see no need to further prolong this trial. The defense's case is insufficient over time of the just claims. The court finds the defendant proves right guilty! Well, what are you gonna do? Let's wrap it up! End of case two. Case three begins. Oh, thanks for opening the door for me again. Let's see where it starts me off. Wait! It's that easy? And you give me full life? Are you kidding me? <laughs> when did they get so generous? Okay, wow, it blows my mind. It can't be her! No way. Up oh, there! Oh, okay, hold on. Back, 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 back. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have full life now, what the fuck? Doesn't this shadow resemble the suspicious shadowy figure? Now that you mention it, it does, doesn't it? Miss Wright, could you identify this shadow for the court? Let's see, I believe that's Mr. Hat's shadow. It's from when he's being pulled up from the stage to the catwalk overhead by wire. Then could the shadow that's shown later in the footage be Mr. Hat too? No, that's not possible. After Mr. Hat was pulled up to the catwalk, he stayed up there. In other words, the second shadow is from some other figure being pulled up. Some other figure? I'm afraid you'll need to be more specific than that, Mr. Justice. We've come this far. I'll just have to figure it out from the clues I have on hand. What is the second shadow being shown? 
boop, boop. Where is the victim photo? Where is the victim photo? Take that! If we consider what was happening on the stage at the time, there's only one answer. And the reason I chose that is because there's a huge hook in the back of his pants. So, yeah. The shadow belonged to the fake Mr. Rius. In other words, Mr. Man of Mystery. The victim. Please take a look at the prank plan script. Mr. Mystery was... Oh, Mr. Mystery. Was to pretend to be dead and then fly up into the air after that. Isn't that right, Mr. Rettens? Indeed. And what of it? I contend that that's exactly what happened. The victim was wearing a stunt harness around his waist. It was most likely attached to a stunt wire so that he can be pulled up into the air. So you're suggesting that after pretending to be dead in the coffin, the victim flew up into the air just as the prank script says. Exactly. We just couldn't see him go flying up because the dragon was blocking our view. And that last trick, ladies and gentlemen, is the true piece de resistance of the culprit's murderous magic show. Don't tell me you've got it all figured out. Yes, because I'm fucking smart. If we could just look beyond Mr. Rettens' last bit of misdirection, we should finally be able to see the real truth. The victim must have been pulled up to the catwalk just like Mr. Hat and hit the cushioning up there with considerable force. I just have to figure out what else happened up there at that time. Are you ready to elaborate, Mr. Justice? Yes, Your Honor, I'm ready. In that case, please answer me this. Why did the culprit make the victim fly up into the air like that? To murder him! Just why did the culprit have the victim fly up after he appeared in the coffin? And how did the victim actually die? When he was only pretending to be dead in the coffin? If we can figure out how these two questions relate, the answers should become clear. Could it be? Mr. Mystery must have thought he was still just part of a prank when he appeared on stage. He probably didn't suspect a thing as he was being pulled into the air. After Miss Wright was called backstage and just as the set piece fell. But the culprit had already planted the real murder weapon in a cushion in the catwalk. It was probably a knife or blade of some sort. You mean... Yes, it really was a magical murder. Just as the prank script said, Mr. Mystery was whisked up into the air. and straight into a blade there in the catwalk. Wouldn't blood drip from the ceiling? Ah well. This murder was committed remotely through the use of a magic trick. Using this method, it wouldn't matter where Mr. Rettens was at the time of death. Gag! Gag! But how exactly does it work, Mr. Justice? Just before the murder occurred. The dragon set piece was up in the catwalk. It and Mr. Man of Mystery were connected to each other by a wire at the time. By carrying out the prank plan, Betty made the dragon set piece fall. Which caused Mr. Mystery to rocket straight up. And into the blade in the cushion. The cushion was high up enough to be hidden from the audience's view. That's why nobody saw the blade. Then that big gash in Mr. Hat's cape. 
The blade must have been set up overhead sometime before the magic show. Mr. Hat must have been slashed by it too. Then he was pulled up to the cushion. I can't believe it! I had no idea! I was told that Trucy would freak out if I made the set piece fall. That's the only reason I did it. You were used, Betty. Roger Rettens used you. I thought he was my little puppet to boss around, but it was the other way around. After the incident occurred, Mr. Rettens arrived at the theater. He got the murder weapon and swapped the rubber sword with the bloodied steel one. That's also when he lowered the victim's body down to the stage. But how did he have time to do all that? When the set piece fell, the audience was evacuated from the building. He was able to do all those things after the fact because there was no uh, one around to see. Blech. Oh, oh, I'm struggling now. A horrific murder camouflaged by a spectacular magic show. That sounds like the kind of murder only a magician could pull off. As long as the show proceeded as it was scripted, Mr. Mystery was doomed to die. That's why it was you, Mr. Rettens, who killed the victim, all the way from the TV station. This prank plan, or should I say murder plan, proves your murderous intent. Enough! You dim-witted, ignorant, imbecilic, putrid red pepper. But I clearly won, so why don't you shut your goddamn mouth? He can't possibly have a counter-argument to make. Talk about not knowing when to let it go and move on. Why would you not say that out loud? Say that out loud! Do you have a rebuttal or something? No blade of any kind was found in the catwalk. Which means you have no evidence to support your theory. But Mr. Rettens retrieved it after the fact. Which still leaves you with no way to prove your wildly fantastic remote murder theory. But! Without proof does it not make more sense to believe that the murder was committed there on the stage. That's where the bloodstained sword was found, after all. That is a very good point. Not really. That's the only person who could have committed the crime there on that stage. Trucy Wright remains the prime suspect. It would appear that what you call truth is little more than a cheap parlor trick. In the end! You have done nothing to prove the accused's innocence. It is time at last to let it go and move on. <laughs> Are you seeing this Magnifi Grammarie? My magic is exacting punishment on your granddaughter. The Grammarie name is done for. We'd hit them with a decisive piece of evidence here. I know, that's just what I was thinking. Mr. Justice, do you or don't you have anything to prove that the witness committed this remote murder you proposed? Duh! This entire incident was carried out exactly according to the script. So, theoretically, there should be no evidence for us to find or use, which means our best bet is to see if something unscripted happened. There's gotta be something Rettens couldn't have foreseen. And once I find it, that's how I'll expose his murderous trick. Get ready, Mr. Rettens, because I'm about to reveal the secret to your magic. There are no tricks or gimmicks here, just some good old-fashioned logic. Oh yay, these! As long as the magic show went as scripted, the murder would happen without fail. Everything in this case was carefully planned so that no evidence would be left behind. Still, one thing happened that definitely wasn't in the plan. What part of the magic show wasn't a part of the show's original script?
Bonnie made a mistake during Trucy's escape trick. What mistake did Bonnie make during the magic trick? Her life choices! Uh, stage lift preparation. Oh, was it Mr. Hat? Yes, Trucy had a hard time because the stage lift she needed was in the raised position. But that wasn't a mistake on Bonnie's part since Trucy wasn't supposed to use it anyway. And it was because Trucy had to suddenly use a different life. Lift. Life. That she had to move it. So what was it that Bonnie did during Trucy's escape trick? It was... I'm gonna say this. I gotta say it. No, no. I should never say a person's life choices are a mistake. I'm sure she could be a great magician someday if she works hard at it. Good luck, Bonnie! <laughs> Let's see. Mr. Hat's positioning. Because Bonnie placed Mr. Hat to the right of the coffin instead of to the left. Trucy had to reappear on the side of the coffin opposite to the one of the show script. But the culprit didn't know that when he first arrived at the theater. Which means he was bound to make a slip-up when he tampered with the crime scene. Which part of the culprit's cover-up attempt was affected by Trucy's new position? Fingerprints on the coffin! Oh, shit. No, that's not right. Even if Trucy's position changed, that wouldn't affect the placement of the fingerprints on the outside of the coffin. I meant the inside of the coffin! I suppose blood- Oh, yeah, that's right. That's why he would have rotated it, which did affect the fingerprints on the inside. Thinking Trucy had appeared on the left, the culprit must have put the blood in the left hole. But the blood was eventually discovered in the right hole during the police investigation. If the killer had originally put the blood on the left side, that means he must have tampered with the scene again afterwards to make it line up with the facts. To make the crime scene consistent with the facts, the culprit must have... Swap the coffin sides. The left and right panels of the coffin are interchangeable. The culprit must have switched the two panels to make the bloodstain fit the facts. But the switch might have also given rise to something unnatural. I remember now. There was something unnatural about the coffin, and it's just the evidence I need. Yes. Sorry, Mr. Rettens, but I have some very conclusive proof of your guilt. Another bluff, is it? There's no way you have anything of the kind. My magic is real. Objection. No. There are tricks and gimmicks to it, just like any other illusion. After the murder, you switched the left and right panels of the coffin, didn't you? And because you did, you left behind something very unnatural for us to find. This proves that Roger Rettens tampered with the crime scene after the murder took place. Um. No, it should not be the fingerprinting results, because that's supposed to be for Betty. Um. Oops. Take that. Oops, okay, yep. I can go for the fingerprint again. Alright, 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 alright. Alright, calm down. Your gimmick, your bluff, whatever you want to call it. Or should I just call it what it is, a lie? But I'm not. Burn. Apollo, your forehead. It's on fire. Put it out. <laughs> You're burning through my patience, defense. Are you all right? I feel like a serving of Apollo. Ah, uh, Oz Jaws. Ah, uh, no one's going to get that because it's an inside joke. But okay, except Chloe. Chloe will get it. But at least my hair's all right, right? I'll get it right this time, Your Honor.
Boo boo. Boo boo. The fingerprinting results. What about the fingerprints is unnatural? Let's take a look at the fingerprints the victim left inside the coffin, shall we? If the victim was facing forward in the coffin, his prints should have looked like this. However, what we found was... They were facing the opposite direction. It's quite unnatural for the prints to be facing this way, wouldn't you agree? It is strange, isn't it? But how did they get this way? They got this way because the culprit thought the magic show had gone according to script. The culprit thought Mr. Hat would be on the left side of the coffin. And that Miss Wright would also pop up the left of the coffin, as per the show's script. He then assumed she had thrust the sword into the hole on the left side of the coffin. That's why he put blood in the left hole when he was trying to cover up his crime. But sometime after leaving the bloodstain, the culprit must have realized his mistake. He found out that, due to Bonnie's mistake, Mr. Hat was to the right of the coffin. And that despite the script, Miss Wright had thrust the sword into the hole on the right. In short, the hole with the blood in it was on the side opposite the one that Trucy used. To make the blood's location fit the facts, he had to tamper with the evidence yet again. So he tried to cover his tracks by switching the coffin's left and right panels. And that's how the fingerprints in the coffin ended up backwards. Because the culprit switched the two side panels around. The prints ended up facing the opposite direction. But instead of going to all that trouble with the panels, why didn't the culprit just wipe the blood away and redo it on the other side? I'm afraid that wouldn't have worked, Your Honor because of a little something called luminol testing. Ah, oh, right, that, that luminol business I've heard of as being a judge for 50,000 years, yes. Luminol can detect trace amounts of blood even if it's wiped away, right? That's right. Wiping the blood away would have only served as proof of his meddling. How about it, Mr. Rettens? I did a pretty good job figuring out your trick, didn't I? Trucy Wright could have done the same just as easily. You have no proof that it was this witness who tampered with the evidence. Objection! But I do have proof. A person who was in the magic show would never have made the mistake of putting the blood on the wrong side. Least of all Miss Wright, who surely would have remembered she was on the other side. You're absolutely right. I'm sure you've realized by now, Sotmati, that your claim that Miss Wright is the culprit just doesn't hold up. You and the accused are most certainly Objection. bound for hell. Really? Miss Wright and I? Because I think you're the one with the ticket there for trying to convict an innocent girl. Hell? Zodmati, are you alright? As for the true culprit, he is someone who knew how the show was supposed to go but didn't actually see it. And someone who had the chance to tamper with the crime scene after the incident. And the only person who fits the bill is you, Roger Rettens. Why are you reeing at me, bro? All the secrets to your tricks have been revealed. And with no tricks left, I'm afraid your show's been cancelled. Permanently. All of my secrets have been revealed, you say? Don't make me laugh, boy. Mine is the true real magic. There are no secrets to reveal. 
Behold, ladies and gentlemen, the true power of the great Mr. Rius. Witness a magic far greater than troop grammaries. How did he have time for all this? I'm amazed. Fall to my furious flames, the great Mr. Rius. We'll bring an end to you all. And now for the final heir to the Grammary name. Right here, right now, you too. Huh? No, this isn't right. I didn't do anything wrong, no. It's not my fault. I'm not the one to blame. I'm the victim here. Okay, that was one of the cooler... Who the hell is messaging me? Curse those grammaries. It's all because of them. Even now they wound me. Curse them all to the abyss. And, you know, it's been 46 minutes, and we know who it is, and we proved it, so all that's really here is probably about 10 minutes of the wrap-up, the case closing, everyone cheering that Trucy's free, so why don't we save that for the next video, so the next video will be end of case 2, beginning of case 3, probably, so stay tuned, Bye bye